My name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. In this episode we will look at the pedal box for my car. I decided something purpose built would be required rather than buying something off the shelf due to the specific packaging requirements of this car. I went for a laser cut steel construction as it would keep it relatively light and get the design that worked for me at a relatively low cost. A racing car such as this has three pedals to control the clutch, brake and throttle and each functions in a slightly different way. The clutch simply pushes a hydraulic master cylinder which actuates the clutch slave cylinder. The master cylinder is able to connect to the pedal through a rod end. The brake pedal is more complex. It has to push two master cylinders, one for the front brakes and one for the rear. Further to this, the amount of force that it applies to the front and rear must be adjustable to allow the driver to tune the brake bias to suit the conditions. To accomplish all of this, a balance bar sits within effectively a tube within the brake pedal, connected to a bearing. The connections to each master cylinder are threaded and so the position of the bearing within the pedal may be changed by turning the bias bar. A special cable allows the bias bar to be turned remotely by a dial within the cockpit. Finally, the throttle pedal simply connects to a cable that runs through the car to the carburetor on the engine. It must have a cutout to allow the brake bias cable to pass by unimpeded not such a concern on the throttle pedal as it doesn't need to be as strong as the others. The position of the master cylinder actuation point on the pedals is important as it dictates the motion ratio and force profile as the pedal is pushed. Ergonomically it would be best if the pedals pivoted on the floor at the same height as the driver's heels. The positions of the master cylinders were restricted by the fact that they needed to fit through the H-beam. If the pedals pivoted at the floor, the motion ratio would mean that a lot more force would be required from the driver to push the brakes or actuate the clutch. I had to compromise and raise the pivot to keep a sensible motion ratio. Based on my testing, this doesn't seem to have had a negative impact on the ergonomics. The pedals and master cylinders are mounted to a very rigid removable base which is in turn mounted by multiple bolts rigidly into the chassis. After having the parts cut, I began by welding the various bits together, starting with the pedals. The pivot points had to be turned up on the lathe. The pedals have a steel piece with an inner bearing surface within which sits a brass bush on which the pedal rotates. The pedal base was put together using long threaded rods to help position the many plates correctly. It was then welded along all of the joining seams to produce the part. All the parts for the pedal box are mocked up. The pedals go in first, then the master cylinders are mounted. They sit on steel spaces that allow the pedal's position to have more adjustment. Once everything had been tested and assembled, the parts were stripped down and painted. Finally, they went through a final assembly in the car, completing the car's pedal box. That's it for this one. Being a simpler part of the car, it didn't take too long to get the pedals together once they were designed. There's more to be done on these. I'm planning to make some pedal faces that will bolt onto the front of each pedal, but these will require a bit of experimentation to make them as comfortable as possible. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I'll see you on the next one.